Hey, welcome back to the final part of the free training. I really hope you enjoyed the last couple of videos. In today's session, we're going to be talking about the mistakes that I see many people making that are holding them back. Same as before, we're going to hop over to my computer in a minute and start the training. And as before, please do leave any comments, anything you'd love to share in the box below. And um, I really hope that this has been a valuable course for you and I really look forward to working with some of you soon. So welcome back to video three in the free training series. Creating Perfume, the 11 huge mistakes that are preventing you from making a great fragrance. In the last video, we discovered the 10 biggest frustrations that students have when they start out. And in the video before that, the five myths of becoming a perfumer. If you haven't seen the previous videos, go back and watch them now. Today, we're gonna to talk about the top 11 mistakes that people make when they're creating a fragrance and how you can avoid them. Now everyone makes mistakes when they start anything new and it's all part of the learning process but sometimes we don't know what we don't know and we end up repeating the same mistakes over and over again. If you don't know what mistakes you're making with your perfume creation or how to avoid them then you could end up going around in circles for a really long time. I often see, see people still making these mistakes long after they've passed the beginner's stage and they are so easy to avoid but if you keep making them you're never going to create a good fragrance so if you stop making them which you will do by the end of this video you'll be head and shoulders above most other people so what are these huge mistakes mistake number one not getting to know your materials not getting to know your materials thoroughly enough is a huge mistake. Even if you just do this, you'll be way ahead of the bunch. I get all of my students to start a journal or a card file. Spend a few minutes every day smelling through your materials and writing down your observations. Just pick two or three a day, depending on how much time you've got to spare. And dip a smelling strip in your material and write down the time and your first impressions of the material that's on the strip. Go back and re-smell the same material over several minutes or hours and then write more notes. This way you'll be able to understand how the scent of the material develops over time and also how long it lasts. Mistake number two, avoiding materials that you don't like the smell of on their own. There may be materials that you like and then there may be materials that you don't like. And this is a bit more of an advanced tip but please don't rule out a material just because you don't like the smell of it on its own. Often there are many materials that don't smell that pleasant on their own, but in a tiny amount, used in a tiny amount in a blend, they can often work magic. So please don't let the initial smell and the initial impression of a material make you avoid using it in future. Please keep an open mind. Mistake number three, Wasting expensive materials with costly errors. Nobody likes to waste money and fragrance materials can be costly. The best way to avoid wasting materials is to create your fragrance blends using very, very small amounts. And this means that if you make a mistake, there isn't too much waste. What I tend to do is dilute a set of materials or about 10 or 20% in perfumer's alcohol. And some of the stronger ones, I probably dilute at 1% or sometimes even less. And this means you can experiment with them without too much wastage. But do make sure that you don't dilute all the material that you have in alcohol, otherwise you won't be able to use it in other types of bases. So if you're making an alcohol-based perfume spray, that's fine. And for playing around and learning your materials, then dilutes are really great. But you won't be able to then add it to something like a bath oil base because it won't blend in. A 10 ml bottle, at 10% means that you need one gram of essential oil or absolute and then you add to that nine grams of alcohol and give it a mix and that's how you would dilute down your materials in um, an alcoholic base so that you can use tiny increments and you can avoid wastage. Mistake number four, using drops not weight. Now 
this leads the last one mistake leads us re really nicely onto this mistake here most essential oils come in dropper bottles and most aromatherapy courses teach using drops now this is fine if you just want to add a few drops of essential oil to a massage blend and you're not wanting to recreate it but it really isn't accurate enough for perfumery Think about one drop of bergamot oil, which is quite thin and comes out, out of the bottle very quickly, and compare that with a drop of vetiver, which is quite thick and gloopy and very, very slow moving. Now, are they the same weight and volume? No, of course they're not. Now, in my one day class, for practical reasons, we start off by using mils rather than weight. Um, milliliters that is rather than weight as the materials I use in the classes are all pre-diluted pre in alcohol and you know getting used to using sensitive lab scales in a busy group environment like a workshop is a bit of a challenge however if you're doing this at home I would advise that you weigh everything and this way you will always be able to replicate your fragrances now lab scales are expensive though so when you're just starting out um, what you can do is buy some jewelry scales from somewhere like eBay and you know they're I think they're about ten pounds. You know sometimes you might be able to find them for a bit more, a bit less, depending on the quality. The best ones to look for are the ones that go down to zero point zero one of a gram, and they tend to be battery operated, so they do have a little bit of a cutout point. Um, so they're not you know you you probably will want to upgrade to lab scales a bit further down the line, but the jewelry scales are a really good starting point to get you weighing things right at the very beginning. Mistake number five, no consistency in measuring materials. So this is obviously related to the above mistake. So whether you choose to use drops, mils, grams, you know, whichever way you decide to go, you must be consistent, otherwise you'll never be able to replicate your formula. Mistake number six, not recording the formula accurately. So you've got your scales and you're weighing all of your materials and that's great but it's no good if you don't write it down and this seems like such an obvious thing to do but you'd be amazed how many people don't record their formula and I don't mean just the amount of each material but also who the supplier is as materials especially naturals can differ um, from supplier to supplier and if you then made up your fragrance with the same material but it was from a different supplier it's going to affect the fragrance so it's always good to write down the supplier name as well and also if you are using pre-diluted materials write that down adding one mil of neat bergamot is not the same as adding one mil of diluted bergamot at 10 percent so you're probably not going to remember that what you did further down the line um, or in a few months time so at the time as you're making your fragrance step by step record as much information about that process as you can mistake number seven getting distracted this should probably be <laughs> this should probably be mistake number one um, because you, you really have to treat your fragrance creating sessions like a bit of a lab experiment turn your phone off shut the door lock the cat out you know make sure that you've got time away from the kids or preparing the dinner or all of those kinds of things and make sure that you're not going to be disturbed if you get distracted while you're weighing a material and you don't write it down you will be forever unsure of what you did and it always happens that you make the best accord that you can never replicate now this should be a real kind of no-brainer but we have all been there we have all done it so if you do it don't beat yourself up about it, but just really, really do try and keep your perfume creation sessions in a very quiet space away from all distractions. Otherwise, you will end up getting in a muddle. Mistake number eight, not having a clear idea about what you're making. What I often see people doing when they just start out is that they pick materials that they like and a bunch of them, and then they try and blend them together without any clear idea of the intended outcome. Now, in the fragrance industry, we always start with writing a brief. If you're just experimenting or making a fragrance for yourself, it may not seem like an obvious thing to do, but it is really, really helpful to keep you on track. 
and it helps you to know if you're going off on a tangent. Now, a brief is essentially a plan of your fragrance idea. So in a commercial brief, you'd include elements such as cost, who the fragrance is for, such as the country that it's going to be launched in, the age range that it's designed to appeal to. And it would often be so detailed that it gives the profile of a fictional person that even includes details such as where she lives, what magazine she buys. Now, obviously, you don't need to go this far with your brief, but you should at least come up with an idea or a concept. Now, this will help you to know if you've achieved what you set out to do. For example, you may have hit on a wonderful, zesty, refreshing fragrance blend, but if you set out to create a warm, sensual oriental, then you're not quite on track. And actually having that idea or that clear idea and that brief will really, really help you to stay on track and create the fragrances that you want to. Mistake number nine, putting every material you like into one fragrance. And this is sort of related to mistake number eight. So gathering a bunch of nice smelling materials does not necessarily make a great fragrance and nor does putting everything into one blend. Now, especially when you're working with natural materials, keeping it really simple is best and overloading your fragrance with too much detail can end up with it smelling muddled. Often what I see in classes is people gathering together all of the materials that they like and trying then to find ways of incorporating them into the same fragrance. And looking at it from a distance and from my point of view I kind of can see sometimes they've got two separate fragrance ideas that possibly would work great as two individual perfumes but is a recipe for disaster if you try to put it all into one so don't try and overload your fragrance really really keep it simple mistake number 10 ignoring the fragrance market because you just want to use natural materials now this is a biggie Unfortunately, many beginners who turn to natural perfumery shun the commercial fragrance market as they really don't feel that it applies to them. Maybe they don't like the, the, the kind of fragrances that, that are getting launched by the mainstream companies and they decide, no, I just want to use naturals for whatever reason and then completely ignore what's going on outside. Now, natural perfumery is very, very different to commercial perfumery for sure, but you can't create inside a bubble. And this is especially relevant if you want to start a business, as you really do need to understand why fragrances are as they are, where they started out, and how your fragrances can fit into that market. Now, a great example of this was a natural perfumer who, having no interest in commercial fragrance, completely ignored it. And fast forward to a brief from a client to create a big white floral fragrance, which failed to impress them. And what the natural perfumer thought of as a white floral and what the client was thinking of as a white floral were completely different. So you have to be able to communicate at all different levels with your fragrance creation and especially if you're creating fragrances for other people. And if nothing else, it's important to learn the language of commercial perfumery so that you can then interpret it with naturals and you're both speaking the same language. Mistake number 11, not putting in the practice and effort. As they say, success is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. So don't expect to learn the tricks of the trade overnight and without hands-on practice. Perfumery is an art, a craft and a science. And reading tons of theory without physical practice, smelling and blending will get you nowhere. Try things, make mistakes and start again. Do this consistently and often and you will get there. So practice, practice, practice. So those are the 11 huge mistakes that are preventing you from making a great fragrance. And what I would like to know, is there anything else that's stopping you from creating perfume? Or is there a mistake that you've made and you've learned from that? Please let me know in the comments below. So I hope you enjoyed this free training series. Of course, as you probably know, what I've included in this training is only the tip of the iceberg. So if you wanna go further and learn more, then I hope you'll join me inside my new online program, which is especially created for people like you. So in the next couple of days, I'll be sending you a special invitation to join my new online perfumery course. And the enrollment doesn't open to the public um, for a while, but 
I do have a very sens time sensitive VIP offer for those of you that have signed up for this training. So do watch your inbox this week. And also if you know someone who might be interested, do send them the link to this free training so that they can get on the VIP list too. I'll speak to you very soon.